Hello, fifth graders. This is chapter two, lesson six, and chapter two, lesson seven of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. Similar to lesson three and four, we are going to be combining lesson six and seven. For lesson six, we will be doing all activities, and for lesson seven, we will be skipping activity two. So let's get started. So, we read a case study about restoring aspen trees in Yellowstone. So think back and try to remember what did ecologists do to restore the aspen trees? Think back again. How do you think the scientists convinced people about the connection between the wolves, the elk, and the aspen trees? Today, we are going to read a book to explore more about how and why scientists argue and support their claims with evidence. We will be reading, Why Do Scientists Argue? We'll read about a scientist named Rachel Carson who investigated ecosystems. She was concerned that pesticides were harming plants and animals. The image to the left is a picture of Rachel Carson. Today, we are going to investigate this question. How do scientists convince others that their claims are correct? Think about your experience making scientific arguments in this unit. Maybe specifically think about when we looked at claim one and claim two and answer this question. How do you think scientists convince others that their claims are correct? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson six seven activity packet in a notebook, or you can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question now. As we read, I want you to think about what Carson did to convince other scientists of her claim. We can look for connections between what she did and what we've been doing in our arguments. Okay. We are going to read, Why Do Scientists Argue? To read this book, see the separate reading video of this book. Before you do that though, I want you to turn to page 46 of your ecosystem restoration workbook or page three of your chapter two, lesson six dash seven packet and do the page that says getting ready to read, why do scientists argue? Pause the video and answer those questions. After you've read, why do scientists argue? I want you to think about this. We know that a scientific argument starts with a claim. So in the book, what was Rachel Carson's claim? Remember, you need to read the book before you answer the next couple questions. To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson six dash seven activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question. Rachel Carson's claim was not what other scientists thought at the time. So answer this question next. What did other scientists claim? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson six dash seven activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question. Next, let's think about what Rachel Carson did to convince others that her claim was correct and was supported by evidence. We can think about how this is similar to what scientists today do and how it was also similar to what we have been doing as we have made arguments about ecosystems. That concludes activity one and two of lesson six. Go to the next video for the next activity. Hello fifth graders, this is the reading of Why Do Scientists Argue? 
Remember, you can pause this video anytime you need to, and I encourage you to read along as I read. Let's begin. This book is about scientists and why they often argue. If you look through this book, you will notice the pages are two different colors. The green pages tell the story of a scientist who lived in the 1900s named Rachel Carson, and the white pages tell about scientists today. There are three ways to read this book. You can read only the green pages about Rachel Carson. You can read only the white pages about scientists today, or you can read all the pages in order. The book will make sense no matter which way you read it. Just don't try to read it backward. For our purposes, I'm going to read both the green and the white pages. Let's start with the green page. In the 1950s, a scientist named Rachel Carson sat up late at night, writing alone. She had studied ecosystems all her life, observing fish in the ocean, birds in the forest, and many other organisms. She had researched ways that ecosystems were beginning to change, and now she was working hard to explain to readers what she had learned. Some scientists work alone like Rachel Carson, but some work with partners, and others work on very large teams. No matter how they work, all scientists are part of the scientific community. Most people think of their community as the people in their neighborhood or town. This kind of community is connected by the place where people live. The scientific community is spread out all over the world, but all scientists are connected. They all want to figure out how the world around them works. Carson asked questions about ecosystems. She wondered, how do the things people do affect ecosystems? Do the pesticides people use kill insects, also kill other organisms in an ecosystem? Carson decided to investigate to try to find out answers to these questions. All scientists ask questions. They ask questions about organisms, stars, the ocean, the matter, that everything is made of, and more. Scientists share a way of answering their questions too. When scientists want to find answers to questions about the world, they investigate. If a question is very important, many scientists try to find an answer. These scientists may not work in the same place, but they are still part of the scientific community. When Carson lived, it was more difficult for scientists to communicate because they didn't have email or the internet. Scientists mainly communicated by writing books, letters, and articles. Carson read what other scientists had written about pesticides. Pesticides are used to poison insects, weeds, and other so-called pests, living things that can harm people or crops. Many scientists made the claim that pesticides only kill the specific insects or weeds they are supposed to kill, nothing else. They claim that pesticides could not poison other organisms, and so they could not harm ecosystems. By the 1950s, people had started spraying pesticides everywhere they could. Scientists today still communicate by reading and writing books, letters, and articles. However, now they have lots of new ways to communicate. For example, using phones and computers. Scientists from all over the world fly in airplanes to meet with one another so they can discuss the questions they are investigating and the evidence they are gathering to try to answer those questions. Carson didn't think scientists had enough evidence to support the claim that pesticides don't harm ecosystems. She started looking for data about how pesticides were affecting ecosystems. When she looked at data the scienti that scientists had collected about organisms and ecosystems all over the world. She looked at how those ecosystems had changed over time and found lots of evidence that the numbers of organisms in an ecosystem went down after people started spraying pesticides there. The evidence showed that pesticides were killing lots of different organisms, not just the ones they were meant to kill. Carson disagreed with that, with what other scientists had been saying about pesticides. When scientists disagree, they often argue with one another. Some people see arguing as a bad thing, but an argument means something different to scientists. When scientists argue with one another, it is because they are all trying to figure out the best answer to a question. Arguments move science forward. 
Carson wrote a book presenting her claim that pesticides were harming ecosystems. She talked about all the evidence she had found that pesticides kill lots of different organisms in an ecosystem. Carson explained that the organisms in an ecosystem all interact, so that poisoning one type of organism affects the whole ecosystem. Many scientists disagreed with Carson and kept arguing that pesticides could not affect whole ecosystems. Here's how scientists argue. Scientists get together to talk about their investigations. They share the questions they are investigating, and they try to answer the questions by making claims and describing how evidence supports the cl those claims. They listen to one another and ask questions. Sometimes different scientists make different claims about the same question. They may be looking at different evidence, or they may explain the same evidence in different ways. They disagree. These disagreements are very exciting for scientists because a disagreement is a chance to figure something out. For Carson, evidence was the most important thing. In science, the best claims is the one that is best supported by evidence. A claim with no evidence is just an opinion. The scientists who argued that pesticides couldn't harm ecosystems only had a little bit of evidence to support their claim. But Carson found a lot of evidence to support her claim that pesticides harm ecosystems. When scientists argue, they talk about different claims and how well the claims are supported by evidence. Arguing helps scientists understand one another's claims and evidence better. Sometimes scientists change their minds and decide they agree with a claim they disagreed with at first. Changing your mind can be hard, but it means you are learning something new. Over time, the evidence Carson collected convinced scientists that other people, and other people too, more and more scientists began to agree with Carson. People stopped using some of the most harmful pesticides and passed laws about where and when it was okay to use other pesticides. People began to pay more attention to how human activities affect ecosystems. Carson used evidence to change the way people think about ecosystems. Some scientists argue about a question for many years. They may disagree until they find new evidence or make a better tool that they can measure something that they couldn't measure before, or think of a better way to investigate the question. When scientists argue, it often means that they are in the process of figuring out something new. Scientists work together and change the way we see the world around us. As scientists get more evidence to support a claim, they begin to agree. Today, people remember Rachel Carson as a scientist who is brave enough to disagree. When she argued, she always supported her claims with evidence. She pushed the scientific community to pay closer attention to human effects on ecosystems. She also helped people around the world understand ecosystems better. Scientists today are all part of the same community. Scientists from different countries often work together on the same investigations. Scientists all over the world work together, read one another's writing, and meet to talk about their work. That means more chances to argue. Science is moving forward faster than ever because scientists work together and argue. Let's take a moment to look at the glossary. These are important words that need to be pointed out. Pause the video to get a closer look at some of these words. That concludes the reason or the reading of why do scientists argue. Hello fifth graders, this is chapter two, lesson six, and lesson seven, the ecosystem restoration unit. Remember, we are combining lessons six and seven. We are doing all activities for lesson six, and we are skipping activity two for lesson seven. So let's continue our learning. So we just read why scientists argue. Now you will be synthesizing to help answer the question about how scientists convince others their claims are correct. So you are going to turn to page 47 of your ecosystem restoration workbook or page five of your chapter two, lesson six dash seven activity packet. You are going to complete the first three boxes after reading Why Do Scientists Argue? The first box is the pages about scientists today. 
Those were the white pages that were on the right. The second box is the pages about Rachel, Rachel Carson. Those are the green pages. They were on the left. And the third box is your experience making arguments as an ecologist. Once you get your ideas from the first three boxes down, you are going to connect the ideas and record your new understanding about how scientists convince others that their claims are correct. This should be something that is new, not something that you already thought. The key concept that we have learned about over the last couple lessons and activities is that scientists convince others that their claims are correct by using data and ideas as evidence. So now what I want you to do is pause the video and complete the page that says synthesizing ideas about why scientists argue. The data and ideas that scientists use as evidence to support their claims come from observations. Without these observations, scientists would have opinions, but not evidence. Observations are very important for gathering evidence to find answers to scientific questions. Scientists like Rachel Carson test their ideas over and over again, gathering evidence to support their claims. When there is enough evidence supporting a particular idea, the scientific community can come to an agreement that the idea is true. These agreed upon ideas are called scientific theories. It's only through scientific argument that scientific theories can arise. When we read Why Do Scientists Argue? We learned that scientists convince others that their claims are correct by using data and scientific ideas as evidence. You will make a claim about why the cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving. You'll try to convince others that one claim is best by using data and scientific ideas as evidence. So remember the image on the left is from our project area. Rachel Carson reviewed data that was collected by other scientists in order to support her claim about pesticides. We've received some data from Natural Resources Rescue that may be useful evidence to consider as we think about why the cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving. So let's take a closer look at our data. This is a project report number two update and seven days of weather data. So we can see we have our project area and our healthy rainforest. We have a number of sunny days, total rainfall and carbon dioxide in the air. So if we look, our number of sunny days in our project area was five. Our total rainfall was 40 millimeters or 1.6 inches. And our carbon dioxide level is normal. In our healthy rainforest, our number of sunny days was six. Our total rainfall was 76 millimeters or three inches, and the carbon dioxide in the air was normal. Remember, this is just for seven days of weather data. So now, after looking at this data, I want you to answer question six. What does the updated project report show? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson six seven activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Go ahead and answer question six. That concludes this video. Our next video will be about writing an argument.